Hey guys, we're back. You're back with me, Peter Hurley, and we are going back to basics. And guess what? Today, we are talking about these babies, something that all photographers love, our glass. All right, guys, Neville's ready. He's in front of my lens, right? And I am shooting an EOS R5 with, on it right now, a 24 to 105. Now it's an F4 lens and I have it at set around what I hope is 92 millimeters because that's what I like. So I'm going to take a shot and see. Why do I like 92 millimeters? Truth of the matter is I like the distance to my subject. I don't like to feel too far away. Do I feel, I don't feel so close. I'm not so up and close. And now I'm like, I'm like too close. So I like about 92 for my crop is about right here. So. Now, jam that forehead out, go chin down. Let's take a shot of you. Good. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, why the 24 to 105 at this juncture? Let's say we're wearing in my New York studio and I was traveling the world and I wanted to travel light. I, I bring one lens with me, it's this one. Why? Because I could do headshots, I can get to 24, I could shoot something wide, I could do my portraits at 50, I got the whole range and at f4 eyes are sharp and the ears start to go out of focus which is exactly what i love each lens does it a little differently and we're going to talk about that so we got a shot with this one at 94 so i'm going to go to 92 just because i think that it's right there and he's already in position he's already ready he's geared up good neville nose this way just a touch very good all right i'm not going to move the camera and we're just going to put on the ef 100 millimeter macro f 2.8 with a adapter for the r5 the mirrorless because it's an ef lens this is a fantastic lens for headshots i've used it multiple for years for headshots and i like it but now it's a hundred so we're gonna we just we just jumped in right so i may have to move back but i'm gonna ascertain the situation let's see what we got up chin down a little bit yeah i'm gonna have to move back just a little bit so now i'm further back from my subject so we're getting a similar sharpness, a similar fall off. So the ears are going a little bit more out of focus, uh, but I'm also at 3.2 compared to the F4. So that's a reason why you want to go with a faster lens. You also want to go with a faster lens if you have lower light situation or if you're, you know, something like that. These I have control over, but it's really nice to get that aperture nice and open. So with that, let's, let's switch it up. And I just want to try and compare this lens to this lens at 92 or potentially at 100 even. And this is the RF 70 to 200. I really value taking this lens with me when I go on the road. So I'm like, usually I could take the 24 to 105 and the 70 to 200, and then I got the whole range covered and up from 70 to 105, I'm probably gonna be on this one because it's 2.8, right? Uh, it's also got a, a tripod mount or I could fix it to the fix it to the body, but let's do it to the tripod mount so I can show you the difference there. And now it goes in like this. So it's nice, it balances the camera out a lot. Okay, so if I can go to 100, so the, let's just compare it at 100, same lens, same aperture, same distance, same everything at, at 3.2, just like the 100 millimeter macro. There you go, now jam the forehead out. Oh, hold that right there. Fantastic, we're still at 3.2. We got a look, we got a nice fall off to the ear. We got great sharpness. We got a nice soft shoulder, which is nice, and I like that. And let's compare it to the 100 millimeter macro. Really soft on the shoulder. They're very similar, guys. They're beautiful lenses, both of them. So the 85 is amazing for a couple of reasons. One is it goes to 1.2. That gives me options with light there. It's a lot of glass, it's beautiful. Now, 85 is about as close as I want to get for a headshot for me. Um, it also, I don't want to get too much distortion. Some photographers like distortion in their work. They like to get closer to their clients. For me, it's a little bit of both. But this is the 85 right from where the 100 was at 100. And looks very similar, but I can move forward a little bit. And we're at 3.2, 100, one one hundredth of a second. ISO 100, the same. Neville's still giving me all the energy. Go nose toward the light over here, Neville. And then tilt the head this way a little bit. I love that. Did you have fun today? 
There you go. Good. There's some energy. That's better. Any okay, cool. Yeah. So we got good stuff. The 8512DS. Let's look at let's look at the difference in the focus and how the shoulder's going out of focus. That's the hundred. Here's the 85, maybe something like this. Wow. It's beautiful. You guys, we're, we're apples to apples on this stuff because Canon makes such a good lineup. It really is. So it's what your preference is and how you're building out your kit. If you shoot macro, you got a 100 millimeter macro. That would be my reasoning for, for getting something like this. If you shoot low light situations and you like the, uh, and you like you shoot it outside a lot and you get a lot of stuff that's cool in the background, I would go with the, the 85. For an all around lens that every Photographer, I think portrait photographers should have, everybody should have in their kit 70 to 200. I think it's just, this is the one of the first ones I bought. The minute it came out, I bought this one. The kit lens that comes where you can get a kit with this, I believe it comes with the kit, is, uh, is uh, 24 to 105. Sometimes the 24 to 105s are in the kit, sometimes they're not, but it's a nice lens to get right off the bat and be able to hold your own. If you, for prime lenses, it's just taking one element out. If you're zooming all over the place, I don't, I don't, when my subject moves back and forth, a lot of photographers that are on a zoom lens won't move the camera back and forth and they start doing this when the subject moves, which changes your depth of field. Stop doing that. Actually move the camera back and forth at that stage of the game. If you find yourself doing this when your subject's moving, go to prime lenses until you get that out of your system and you understand it. Okay, then you're gonna lock it down and your, look's gonna, your work's gonna be very consistent. So we went through a bunch of lenses at work. I love the whole enchilada of taking pictures. Let's just say it's an enchilada. I don't know where I came up with that, but we're saying it's an enchilada. So that's where we're at. So it's a combination of things. One is, what gear do you have? So what do you, you're gonna look at your kit and you're gonna say, what am I gonna use to take better pictures? And the most important thing for us, obviously, is a camera and then what lens we put on it. Once we get those together and we decide, it, let's say we're talking headshots, we're gonna be in close proximity, we're gonna crop above the chest, we're not gonna to wanna to distort them, so we're not gonna to wanna to be so wide. And if you're, if you're limited in funds and limited in your lens body combo and you're shooting like a, a wider lens, like a 35 or a 50, you may wanna just move back and then crop in so that you don't get too much distortion of your subject. So look out for something like that. But if you're going for it and you want to be somewhere between 85 and 105, which is what I believe is the best for headshot photography, you're going to get that lens body combo together, right? And then you're going to shoot. You're going to practice different apertures. Once you decide on your aperture, because the aperture for me is the most important, that's going to create the look of your work. So for those of you that don't know different apertures, you know, they open up as the numbers get smaller and when the numbers get bigger up to F22 or something, you close down real small and you get everything in focus. And when you open them up as wide as the camera can go, it gets whatever's in focus in focus and you start to lose focus on the other things. If you want the eyes in focus and a little bit of fall off in the focus on the ears, so the ears go out of focus and the back shoulder goes out a little bit out of focus like what I do, you're gonna want a lens that opens up a lot, right? Uh, and I shoot these, the, most of them at 3.2. It just seems to be what works for me. I tested that. I thought 2.8 was too much. I thought 3.5 was just not enough or 4.0 wasn't enough. So I went, I went 3.2. That's where I'm at right now. We've got our aperture locked in. Where are we going next? We're gonna go to shutter speed. This is how fast the shutter's open, how much light you're gonna let into that shutter. And most of the time for shutter speed, you're only gonna be concerned about movement of your subject in headshot land is what I call it. Like the subject's standing there. They're not running or jumping. It's not a sporting event. You're not watching something happen in front of you. You gotta freeze the motion. However, there's a big difference if you're on a tripod or handheld as to where the shutter speed starts to, you know, lock everything in. So humans have subtle movement if they're standing there. Photographers hand-holding have subtle movement if they're standing there and if they're composing, there'll be some little movement even though the, some of these camera systems have fancy schmancy stabilizers and stuff like that, but we're not talking fancy schmancy. We wanna get it nailed down with this shutter speed. So my suggestion is, is that I love shooting on a tripod for a number of reasons, and that stabilizes it. So that allows me to go below 1 100th of a second if I want to. Won't go below 180th though. 160th things start to get dicey with humans. They move around a little bit, right? You go to 1 125th of a second, you're good. 1 160th, you're golden. Anything above that is, is just gravy. But that's gonna, that's gonna create our combo 
of aperture, so in my case, 3.2. In my case of the shutter speed, I am at 1 100th one of a second on this shot. And then my ISO is going to be for where my exposure falls into where I want it. Now, my exposure, I like highlights to pop. I like their skin to pop. I want the highlights to be almost so blown that you can barely see detail in the skin on the highlight. So I will always amp it up just a little bit more than maybe some other photographers will that like low key stuff, that likes shooting stuff dark. This is a personal preference as an artist up to you. So my ISO is totally dependent upon those two settings and then how I want the skin to look. And it's always skin I, I, I expose for the highlights. It's how I want the skin to look in the highlights is the way that I do it. Um, and I like the skin to just be, you know, falling off like really bright. So um, something like this, when you look at the highlight on the nose, the brightest portion of the picture, right? Nose, cheeks, forehead in there, I want that to be fairly bright and then the rest of the image should come in just based off of the exposure on the highlights on the forehead and on the bridge of the nose. So that is how you set your aperture, your ISO, and your shutter speed, okay? And in my order, it's aperture, shutter speed, ISO is the way I do it. But you're the artist, you figure it out. If you get your, if some artists like, like blurry pictures, so they go really slow shutter speed to get a little bit of action. This is totally up to you, it depends what you're doing. But if you're running a commercially viable headshot business, you're gonna wanna get people in focus and you're gonna wanna lock this in so you're consistent. So that's what I want you to think about when you do this. Go out, do it, and come see me at the Headshot Crew if you're getting into headshot photography. I would love that. I would love to up your game and show you how I do it and how, and how I teach others to do it and how they can make a living. In the comments below, put the body lens combo that you think is best for you right now. And if you have a dream body lens combo, put that one in there as well. I'd love to see it.